listening to the Sermon Audio Podcast from Redeemer Lutheran Church and Pastor Paul Pett. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is Psalm 41, verse 10, our theme verse for this year. And uh, Ross, if you could bring it up, that'd be great. Thank you. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. This is our text. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask, fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit that we may hear of your word and take it to heart and recognize that your word isn't always the way we ought to understand it but we need to see it through your eyes. Please show it to, a, to us through your eyes. Show us what you would have us to see, that you indeed are gracious to us, and that you call us to that same graciousness, not only for ourselves, but also for those in our lives around us. In your name, amen. So I want you to look at at the verse in front of you, and then there's going to be kind of two areas that I cover. So maybe you've got the first part figured out already. I gave you the opposites, and I said, what is the opposite of grace? I think it was you, Bart, that said. No. Nope. give you guys a hint. Somebody wrongs you, you're very angry, and rather than forgiving them, you want revenge is the opposite of grace. And I want you to see it in that verse. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. And so, Thinking opposites, we're going to come back to that because it's important that we see the opposite meaning and we see how God is speaking to us. Who's talking to who here? But you, O oh Lord. If it was you, who do you think is talking? Is God talking to you a person or is somebody else talking to somebody else? I'll give you a hint. It's all about Jesus, right? So who's talking to who? Exactly. Jesus is talking to his father. And so as we're hearing Jesus talk to his father, Jesus is saying, but you, O Lord, be gracious to me. In what form does that graciousness take place? The next phrase is, and raise me up. Now, if you're thinking Jesus is saying this and you hear the words, raise me up, what event in Jesus' life instantly comes to mind? Resurrection. Is he talking about his resurrection? No, he isn't. He's not talking about his resurrection, but something that happens before that. Exactly. Because the scripture means sometimes the opposite in this regard. Sometimes raise up means lift it up. And in this case, for Jesus, lift it up to where? I'll give you the verse. John chapter 3, verse 14. We're going to hear this in a gospel reading in about three or four weeks. As Read it with me. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must... Hold it. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. Remember, Moses put 
a bronze serpent on a pole, that everyone who looked at it would be healed from the snake bites. Instead, the greater fulfillment, Jesus lifted up on a cross, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus is lifted up. But there's another verse that gives it to us as well. Jesus, later on in John's Gospel, John chapter 12, verse 32, says this, and Jesus said, And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. You know, one of my wife's favorite hymns, other than Abide With Me, Mary, cross, lift, thank you. Like we don't talk to each other. So there's a verse in there that for a long time had kind of a weird wording. Does anybody remember this? The old wording in one of the verses of lift high the cross was about a magnet. And let your cross the magnet be. Does anybody remember this? Okay, well, a few people are kind of nodding their heads, so I'll take that. But you know, I had a, a professor at the seminary who had said, I will give $100 to anyone who can rewrite that verse and get the word magnet out. Because you think of the word magnet, you're thinking something that in kind of a, a mysterious way, kind of in a hidden way, is pulling something unto itself, and that was kind of the reason why the magnet was used. But what Jesus says here is even better. And so they changed the verse to read more like what's on the screen now. And as you promised, draw us all to thee. And so as we look at this, isn't that what the cross is to do? The cross is to draw us all to him. When he is lifted up, to draw us all to him. And that's what he does for us in the waters of our baptism. If you remember in Romans chapter 6, Paul reminds us, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? So there, in the waters of our baptism, we are drawn to the cross. We are drawn to Christ crucified. We are drawn to everything he does there, and we're instantly connected to that. So he is taking our place. He is doing for us that which we could not do. There is his nature of grace. He's standing in our place. He's forgiving our sins, even though we do not deserve it. Because exactly what grace means is an undeserved gift. Grace, as he connects us, to everything that he did here. But as we're connected to that, where does he go next? So back to Psalm 41, verse 10. That I may repay them. Doesn't that seem out of place? I want you to think long and hard about this. There's numerous movies that have a scene that goes something like this. The hero has just overcome his adversary. But in doing so, he has put his adversary in a precarious, hanging off a cliff type situation. The hero reaches out his hand to offer help to his adversary to save him from falling to his death. One of two things can happen at this point. Right? In humility, either the adversary can admit defeat and in humility, take the hero's hand. Or... He can defiantly do something else. Yeah, pull his hand away, fall to his death. You see where I'm starting to go here? You 
In Romans chapter 12, Paul writes this. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Read that with me then. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but for whom did Jesus die? Including whom? All of his adversaries, all of his enemies. Judas, the chief priests, Pilate, the Roman soldiers, all of them. Those who stood at the base of the cross and mocked him. The thief who stood hung on the other cross and mocked him. He died for all of them. But lest we start thinking pretty well of ourselves, where do we start out? Spiritually blind, dead, and enemies of God. We all start out as an enemy of God. So either we've got one of two things that can happen. Humbly receive the salvation that Christ has won for us as he reaches down to take our hand and pull us away from certain punishment eternally or pull away our hand and spend eternity in hell. Jesus can spite his enemies by saving them. Repay his enemies by dying for them. Pay back their evil with... And that's the point. Because that's what he did for all of us. Now do we see that grace is the opposite of revenge. Because it undoes it. It undoes it completely. And that's why God's grace to us, God's graciousness to us, is so important. Because we have to remember that's where we were. We were on the wrong side of all of it. But Jesus died for us nonetheless. Paul also writes, while we were still enemies, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is grace. And so when we hear David, the psalmist, write in Psalm 41, that phrase, we have to take that with absolute humility when we hear that simple word, grace, gracious, graciously, to recognize all of that is undeserved. Everything Jesus did for us was undeserved, and yet he did it for us nonetheless, even though we were on the wrong side. But then that takes a whole different turn in dealing with those who've wronged us. Get where I'm going? How can we Desire revenge when Jesus did this for us. How can we hold a grudge and wish evil and seek to do it when Jesus did this for us? That's the point. Grace is for all even for those who wrong us. That's the voice of Christ. In his name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Thanks for listening. 
At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.